I1 Profiler Advanced Printer Profiling helps you profile both CMYK and RGB output devices and offers more features than basic printer profiling. Select the Advanced Radio button. Here, under Printer, is a device selection pull-down. You can profile an RGB printer, a CMYK printer, or a CMYK plus N with up to four additional colors. At the bottom, I1 Profiler lists all of the printers installed on your computer. Just select the printer you want to profile, and I1 Profiler will choose the right color space. If your printer isn't listed, you need to select the color space yourself. If you're using the driver that came with your inkjet printer, select RGB. Some newer printers actually have 6, 8, or even up to 12 inks. But if you're printing through the print driver provided with the printer, then it's an RGB printer, and that's what you should select. Some printers and presses can print more than four colors. If you're printing to a 4, 6, or 8 color press, or if you're using a RIP to drive an inkjet or toner-based printer that requires a CMYK output or media profile, choose CMYK plus N. If you're printing through a RIP, this is referred to as a multi-channel color space, and you should select CMYK plus N. You'll have the option to define the additional ink colors you're printing with, CMYK OG, CMYK OGV, or True Spot Colors, later in the workflow. We'll look at a CMYK workflow. The process is similar for RGB, and I'll point out the differences as we go. Under Workflow Selection, there are seven options. This module covers printer profiling. You can learn more about linearization, OBC profiling, profile optimization, and color checker proof in the Advanced Printer Profiling Options module. Printer QA and Data Analysis have their own training modules. All of these videos can be found by clicking the Training Video button. OK, let's get started. Select Printer Profiling. Here, across the bottom, are the steps we'll follow to create a printer profile. First, we'll define our patch set characteristics. If you plan to use the ECI 2002, the IT8.7-3, or the IT8.7-4 targets, skip directly to the test chart step. Otherwise, you can select the number of patches you want to print and measure. Use the slider or type in the number and press enter on your keyboard. A large number of patches may give more accuracy, but also requires more prints and measuring. We'll do 2000 patches. I1 Profiler automatically creates patch sets with an optimized balance of C, M, Y, and K. The ratio of dark to light patches is set at zero by default. If you're creating an ICC profile with settings that use a lot of black ink, you may want to decrease this value in order to increase the amount of black used in the patches. On the other hand, if you're planning to use less black ink, you can increase this value. This would increase the number of patches containing only C, M, and Y, and helps I1 Profiler build a profile with better definition of colors that contain mostly C, M, and Y. Total ink coverage determines the maximum value for any patch in the patch set. Select the total ink coverage that is recommended by the printer or press manufacturer or press condition to avoid over-inking problems. If you're working with a RIP that already has an ink limit set, you can allow this number to go all the way to 400%, which means 100% for each of C, M, Y, and K. If you find the print isn't drying properly, lower this value. If your RIP has its own linearization tools, skip this step. If not, you can use the I1 Profiler linearization tool to optimize your inks before you print your test chart. Simply create a linearization file, which is explained in the Advanced Printer Profile Options module, and load it here. The linearization tool is not available in RGB printer profiling. OK, so we've defined the inks, the number of patches we're going to use, the ratio of dark to light patches, the total ink coverage, and whether or not to use a linearization file. If you like, click Save to save these settings for future use. The new patch set appears here at the top of the list. Chart 2000 patches. Now it's time to build the test chart based on these settings. Click the Test Chart button. 
if you need to work with an ECI 2002 or one of the IT8.7 CMYK test charts, you can drag and drop it from the Test Chart Assets dropdown to the Test Chart icon in the workflow. However, we are defining our own custom test chart. Select your measurement device and define a page size that both your output device and measurement device can support. Here you can find the width and height of the patches. The defaults are the standard values for your device. If you're experiencing irregular color behaviors in your print, larger patches can help your device record a more accurate measurement. The i1 ISIS also comes with the option to generate a test chart with a barcode. This barcode can be used later during the measurement process to automatically detect the right settings. If you select the barcode option, you'll need to save the test chart so it can be loaded automatically once the test chart is recognized by the measurement device. And here's the target. The barcode appears here at the top. If your chart has more than one page, you can click the arrow to move between pages. If the printer or press you're profiling is connected to your network, click Print. Make sure your color management is turned off. If your printer doesn't support network printing, you can save the file as a TIFF, PDF, or EPS. Open it in the RIP and print it with the color management disabled. Once you have the target in hand, click the measurement button. If you're using an i1 Pro spectrophotometer or the i1 IO automated scanning table, you'll be prompted to calibrate. Place the measurement device in its white tile and click the calibrate button. Device ready means that the calibration is complete. If you're using an i1 ISIS automated chart reader, this process is automatic and you won't be prompted to calibrate. You can select your printer by name. If it doesn't appear here, click the plus sign to add it. Do the same for the paper that is loaded in the printer or press. This step is optional to improve the data collected in your profile. Click the Measure button and follow the on-screen instructions. The red bar indicates the patches that are being measured. As measurements are completed, the preview will show both the expected values in the upper left and the measured values in the lower right of each patch. When all rows are measured, save the data. It's a good idea to give it a meaningful name that includes the name of the printer or press, the substrate used, and any other important settings regarding the print condition. For most printing presses, measuring more than one test chart from a print run helps to compensate for process variations. Just measure one test chart after another and save the measurement results as assets. Once you're finished, move to the Assets viewer, select all of the measurements from this print run, and drag and drop them onto the Measurement button. The average of all of the test charts will be used to generate the profile. The lighting step is optional. If you do nothing, the default standard D50 illumination will be used. D50 is equivalent to noon daylight. Or if you know your prints will be viewed under a specific lighting condition, you can select it from a list of other standard illuminations. You also have the option to measure your own lighting conditions if you have an i1 Pro that supports ambient light measurement. If you have already taken light measurements, they will show up in this menu. If you need to take new measurements, select Measure from the menu. Follow the instructions to calibrate the i1 Pro. This will require the ambient light head and its black cap to be installed. After the i1 Pro is calibrated, remove the black cap. Point the instrument with its white diffuser towards the light you want to measure and click the measure button. See how the graph changes to show the energy distribution of the current lighting conditions? Click the Save As button to save this measurement. It will show up in the Illuminate Measurement menu and can be used for this profile and others made in the future. The third option is to use the slider or enter the value of the lighting condition that you would like to use. D50 is the choice for most people working in photography and common prepress or publishing workflows. For this profile, I'll select the D50 standard illuminant. Click the Profile Settings button in the workflow to continue. Now, let's take a quick look at the profile settings. I'm just going to cover the basics. 
please refer to the help file for more information. This group of settings defines how your file will be separated into the different ink channels. This feature is only available for CMYK profiles. RGB printer profiling will not have these settings. Set your total ink coverage based on the requirements of the type of printer or press that you're working with. There are some suggestions in the help file to guide you, but it's best to test and evaluate your inking performance, then choose the number that works best for your scenario. Full black separation is an option for CMYK profiling only. It helps optimize profile separations to replace CMY with black whenever possible to save ink. Again, test and evaluate if this is a good option for you. Intelligent Black prevents separation settings that would replace too much ink in the CM and Y channels and cause the image to look flat or desaturated. X-Rite recommends enabling Intelligent Black at all times. You can also select Black Start, the point where you want to start introducing black. You can also set the maximum amount of black to use, the shape of the curve, and what range to extend the black into your saturated colors. For more information about these items, check out the help file. To see a preview of how your settings will apply to images, switch between the set of test images. With the separation buttons, you can also preview the individual channels of the image. These perceptual rendering options include the provided options of colorful and saturation, or you can customize the perceptual rendering intent with these settings. The help menu provides more detail about colorful and saturation. Tables describe how many iterations your ICC profile is using to translate color. I1 Profiler gives you options for optimal quality, which provides a larger table, or optimal size, which provides a smaller table. You have a few choices down here to customize them even further. Experiment with these settings to find the best balance for your workflow and printing condition. Keep in mind that a larger table calculation will result in a larger profile. Make sure that the profile you build is of a suitable size to work with your graphics applications and your RIP. If you're storing images in an image database and you plan on embedding these profiles into documents and images, keep in mind this will increase the overall size of the image and the image database. In this case, you may want to choose Optimize Size to keep file size to a minimum. i1 Profiler offers a few advanced settings. Simply check Use Default to use industry standard settings, or click the drop-down arrow to modify them. The Smoothness option allows i1 Profiler to prioritize smoothness or accuracy when building the profile. If you're building a profile with a lighting condition other than D50, Chromatic Adaption lets you choose the method the software will use to calculate the difference in lighting conditions. X-Rite recommends the Bradford method. You can select the ICC profile version to be compatible with the applications you'll be using the profiles with. Most applications use ICC version 4, but some applications and older RIPs may still use ICC version 2. You can save your settings at this point if you'd like. Click ICC Profile to build your new profile. Give it a meaningful name, just as you did for your measurement data. If you enable saving of CXF data into the profile, you can make changes to it later. Drag and drop the profile from the Asset view onto the ICC Profile button, and all of the data used to generate the profile will be loaded into the profiling workflow again. On the Mac, you have the option to make the profile only available to you. Or, if you have administrative rights on your user account, you can make it available to all users on the system. This feature is not available on the PC. The Hot Folder menu can be used to select other locations on your computer to store profiles. To add a new location, click the plus button. Finally, to build the profile, click on Create and Save Profile. When the profile is complete, a three-dimensional graphic will display the range of colors that were measured to build your profile. i1 Profiler's Advanced Printer Profiling Workflow contains many powerful options to help you customize your results for outstanding color vibrancy, 
accuracy, and repeatability. Experiment with these settings to find the results that work best for you. To learn more about the options for linearization, OBC profiling, profile optimization, and color checker proof, watch the Advanced Printer Profile Options module found behind the video training button. Or arrange a training session with one of our experienced color experts for customized guidance to help you reach your goals.